Hey everyone, I'm in a new location, got a new bookshelf. It's a little small, but we're filling it out slowly but surely. Um, it's September, I can't believe it. Um, August was a great, great reading month for me. I read five books and I loved a lot of them. The first book that I read was Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo and it's no surprise that I absolutely adored this book. This is the perfect YA fantasy high story. This is a story of an unlikely crew of six thieves in Ketterdam, a hub of international trade, where there's just a ton of violence and corruption. We've got a gambler, a convict, a wayward son, a lost Grisha, a Sully girl who was previously trafficked as an exotic slave, and a boy from the barrel who was thirsty for revenge. The character development in this book is really fantastic. I knew that going into it, but um, it did take me a little while to get invested in the story and the characters just because there's so many introductions and you're learning about the world. Um, but Lee Bardugo does a great job of diving into the different perspectives. By the end of the book, I was completely sold on everything. The plot is so riveting. There are twists, there are moments that are just really moving and clever. The premise is really unique too, like how the heist is presented to these group of thieves. It's a complex high fantasy story, so every detail right down to the actual layout of the ice court is just absolutely perfect. I loved getting to see the different layers of Kaz, who's kind of the leader of the crew, um, especially in the beginning stages of the heist when fear creeps in and we get to learn a little bit about his weaknesses. Of course, the lead convict has to have a heartbreaking, intense past, but I just felt like his story, his voice was so distinct um, and I, I just wanted to know more about Kaz Brecker. I also wanted to know more about Inej, um, she broke my heart too. The crew nicknamed her the Wraith and she's sort of this ex-acrobat um, who was sold as an exotic slave to this corrupt woman in Ketterdam. Getting to know her as a character was probably the most enjoyable part of this book and probably what I'm most looking forward to in book two. I was also touched by Nina's character and her development with a certain love interest. I will say that one character annoyed me until close to the end of the book and that was Matthias. I don't know what it was about him. I just feel like I didn't fully believe his character. Um, like his anger would contradict his passion, his passion would contradict his anger, and I guess that was the complexity that she was trying to build in this character, but I don't know, I just didn't buy it. There was something about it that fell off to me, but he definitely grew on me as I was reading and towards the end of the book. But yes, overall, I was really pleased with this book. It definitely lived up to the hype, in my opinion, um, and I'm really excited for the second book to come out. It's supposed to be coming out this month, so I'm gonna have to put it on my TBR soon. Another book I read in August is actually on my shelf. We've got Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. You guys know that I loved this book. I did a full review on it, which I'll link down below. I'm not gonna talk about it a lot here because we've got more books to get into, but definitely, definitely check this out if you're into foodie stories, New York City, heartbreaking tales. Um, it's a contemporary coming of age story and I fell in love with it. The writing was just breathtaking, breathtaking. I obviously took a lot of notes. I have tabs here um, of just quotes that I really loved. I could have tabbed every page. It was fantastic. Another book that I read in the month of August was Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. You guys know that I've been waiting to read this for a long time, or I've been trying to read it for a long time. Um, if you saw my Monday Middles post months ago, I have picked this up on and off for probably half a year. <laughs> there is an unpopular opinion ahead, so buckle up. I don't know if it was just the book hangover after I read Sweet Bitter because I did pick this one up shortly after. Um, which would not be fair, right? Because I'm a mood reader and I was definitely having a book hangover. So I don't know how much of that influenced how I enjoyed or didn't enjoy this book. I just, I didn't love this book. I know I'm in the minority here and let me just preface by saying I totally get why people love this book. So this book is about a girl named Lou Clark who gets a job as a caretaker for a man named Will Trainer, who despite living most of his life as an adventurer is now a person with quadriplegia due to a motorcycle accident. He wasn't actually on the motorcycle, but Will is now struggling with the man that he is now. And uh, 
I just don't think this book was for me. Even though I've been trying to pick it up a lot, um, I went into it pretty blindly and I just don't think I was fully prepared. I was hesitant to pick it up because I knew that this book dealt with heavy topics um, and that the way that it dealt with these topics was receiving some backlash and protesting from the um, disabled community. And that's all I really knew going into it. Um, and I'm not really gonna go into that here, but if you're considering reading this book and maybe something that you wanna look into, I'll leave a link down below that may be helpful. Um, just one of the videos that I saw discussing um, some of the controversial topics in this book. But since this is a spoiler-free review, I don't want to really talk about the tension surrounding this book. Aside from the heavier topics, I just wasn't in love with the writing. I wasn't impressed, um, I'm sad to say, and I just didn't find myself particularly attached to any of the characters. I did enjoy some of the conversations between Lou and Will. Um, there were some entertaining parts that I enjoyed, which is why I wouldn't give it like a one or two star. I found some scenes between Lou and her sister or Lou and her family to be really slow and sometimes unnecessary. I was kind of confused why we were focusing on that part of the story. And I really didn't understand why she switched the first person perspectives throughout. I feel like there were just a few chapters or sections that were in Will's mother's perspective or um, I think it was Nathan, uh, another helper for Will. Um, and I just, I didn't really feel like that was necessary. I feel like it might have been stronger to have the consistent um, perspective of Lou. I did think Lou was a relatable character. She was flawed. I liked her at times. And I really think the book's intent was to get people talking about a really important topic that may not normally be thought of in your everyday life. I think this book had the potential because of the topics um, had the potential to be really powerful, but I just don't think that potential was fully realized, at least not for me. So that's all I'm gonna say about this book. I just, I will probably not pick up the second one. I don't know, you guys let me know what you think. If you think the second one is worth a read, then maybe I will consider it. The next book I wanna talk about is such a favorite. It's an all-time favorite of mine now. It's The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I listened to this book on audiobook. It was narrated by Neil Gaiman himself, which was the best experience ever. I don't know if it was just because Neil Gaiman narrated the book himself or what, but I fell in love with this book. So this book starts out with a middle-aged man in England who returns home after many, many years for a funeral. And while he's there, he sort of wanders to the end of the lane um, to a particular farmhouse with a pond in the backyard. And he starts to remember his childhood, particularly Letty Hemstock, who is one of my favorite, favorite characters of all time, along with her mother and grandmother. Letty is, I think, 10 years old um, when this particular man meets her and he's seven. So he's returning to her childhood home. He hasn't thought about Letty in decades. And he's sitting by this pond and he just starts remembering. And readers are taking on this spectacular journey of one of his childhood memories. So for the rest of the book, really, um, we are in the perspective of a seven-year-old boy. So when he was seven, a man committed suicide in a stolen car that was abandoned down by the end of the lane. And that's where he meets Letty at the end of the lane. And she is a 10-year-old, um, wise beyond her years, magical girl who vows to protect him no matter what. This is a magical, sweet, scary, nostalgic story that just aches of childhood. I think it's best to go into this book a bit blindly, but I do hope to read the phys to physically read the book um, and then do a full review after that because I just loved it that much. There's beautiful imagery, there's just quotes that are so wise and clever and and I just felt like I was like sighing in relief the whole time I was listening to this book. It was just so rich with detail and that separation between the grown-up world and a child's world. That line between truth and lie and monster and reality. It was just such a gorgeous book. I honestly, I can't wait to read everything by Neil Gaiman now. So the last book I want to talk about is The Final Empire, which is the first book in a high fantasy adult trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. This was fantastic and I'm so relieved to say that. I was nervous, but it was so fantastic. The story is just masterfully written, 
especially the ending. This story is haunted by the concept of what would have happened if the hero meant to save the world failed. And for the sake of time, and since my friend Tracy actually summed up what this book is about beautifully in my haul, which I'll link down below, I'm just gonna read the back of it for those of you who don't know about this book, which honestly I'm sure a lot of you do. For a thousand years the ash fell, for a thousand years the Scots slaved in misery and lived in fear. For a thousand years the Lord Ruler reigned with absolute power and ultimate terror, divinely invincible. Every attempted revolt has failed miserably, yet somehow hope survives. A new kind of uprising is being planned, one that depends on the cunning of a brilliant criminal mastermind and the courage of an unlikely heroine, a Ska Street urchin who must learn to master Alamant C, the power of a mistborn. What if the prophesied hero had failed to defeat the Dark Lord? The answer will be found in the Mistborn trilogy, a saga of surprises that begins here. This book wrecked me, especially the end. I could not process the end for several hours. I loved that I read Six of Crows before this one because I was intimidated, um, but they were very similar. They had a similar vibe with the whole heist story. The character development also in The Final Empire was so well done particularly Kelsier's and Vin's character development. I also cared about characters that I barely got to see in this book, and that really speaks to just how well written it really was and how intricate the plot is. It also speaks to the history that he builds throughout, especially the slavery and misery of the Ska, and the different people and thieves that you meet along the way who seem ordinary but are quite the opposite. The book was a little slow for me in the beginning, kind of like with Six of Crows. I really think it's because I'm not that used to fantasy and how there's a lot of character introductions and a lot of world building happening, but I didn't feel like it was info dumpy, which is, kind of a big deal for me. I did feel badly though because I buddy read, kind of, buddy read this book with Jess McGlynn, I'll link her channel down below, and I felt really bad because she read this like a week and a half before I finished it, it might have been two weeks. So she couldn't gush about it with me until I was done. But yeah, it was everything I was hoping for. Um, I am totally on board with the hype, honestly. And I can't wait to read the second one. So those are all the books I have for you um, that I read in August. I was very pleased with the books that I read. Um, I will hopefully be filming a September TBR video soon, hopefully before September is done. I'd love to know what you read in August. What was your favorite book? What was your least favorite book? And I'll talk to you soon.